Dr. Steele, I'm so glad you were able to give us some time today to talk about particularly the little fellows in our farms. Now, I understand that your interest and your passion for the little ones goes back a very long way, and you were also involved from the from the foundation, as it were, of the infancy program back when it was just an infant vision survey team. I mean, it, it was it was a vision, basically, is what it was. But it, it's just so important to to begin to identify problems as early as you can, because the longer those problems sit and fester, then the more long term problems uh, uh, become manifest from them. So if you identify something that's, uh, let's say, potentially um, uh, uh, going to be a problem in crawl, the baby can't just look and see and be motivated to reach for something um, because they can't see it or don't know how far it is or, or haven't developed those skills. If they can't move over to that, then that's going to affect all kinds of physical movement as they mature. So the, the earlier you start, so that's one of the things that I would tell parents to be on the lookout for is if your child's not crawling or not moving to certain things that you know they want, then we need to, to, to get an eye exam. Well, how do you go about actually evaluating acuity problems in a little bit of uh, an infant or toddler? You, we, you don't do it like you do with uh, an adult where you have them read letters. Uh, you do it with um, one of the things that we have is a, a, a set. It's called forced choice preferential viewing. There's some uh, the teller cards do that. Uh, I like the Leah gradings, but it's a, a, a gray paddle about the size of a ping pong paddle. And behind it, I have another paddle that has uh, stripes on it. And several other paddles have stripes that are smaller and narrow, and smaller and narrower. And, and so you just do that, and you separate it like this. Or if I was doing it to you, I would separate it like that. And I would look for you to, to look at the one with the stripes on. And I go down, and I get the smaller and smaller and smaller stripes until I do that, and you don't respond. So I know then that's a cutoff level. And you have then certain expectations for that. that, that day. Well, if it is not an acuity-related issue, and of course, I'm concerned, as you know, with the issue of binocular vision disorder, which isn't acuity-related, how mm -hmm. do you assess that? We, and then how would you go about treating it again? In an we, we have a test there also where we use red-green glasses or Polaroid glasses, but the one I like uses red-green glasses. And red sees one target, the eye with the red lens in front sees one target, the eye with the green lens in front sees the other target. And if they fuse those together and then they see them pop out off the page or a 3D picture, then you know that both eyes are working together. But you can't ask a baby questions about that. I just look for them to reach. And I know if that baby's reaching for that picture of the duck like it's popping out off the page, I know they're using both eyes together. I know they're pointed at the same place. And I know that they have integrated it enough to, to see it pop out on the page. Okay. So you, you, you just engage them in doing things. Uh, engage them in looking. Uh, as, as far as nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, and all that. Um, I just have cards that I carry around in my pocket that got pictures on them. And they have the babies point to the pictures or a, um, a finger puppet on a pin light. And, and just get them to look and engage and see what's the process that they're using. What is your degree of success with children, with the little fellows that need, for instance, vision therapy? Is it pretty much foolproof? Well, it's, it, it's all related back to development. And, and so the, the key is to give, I, I don't do a lot of office-based therapy on babies. I, I get because that has to be done so frequently. You got to do something a thousand times before it ever becomes part of it. And so I give the parents things to do at home. It, and one of them is just, okay, now let's have them look over this way. Keep their keep their head from moving, but look over this way. Then look and touch. Look and touch. Just getting the baby to initiate a looking move. That's the first thing. 
because so much of the rest of, of visual development is based on that initial looking response. And so if you can get them to do it when they're changing diapers, when they're feeding, whenever they're just playing with them, engage them visually, that's a good start because that's where a lot of the kids do it. Then put them over on their tummy. Get them to raising their head and looking down and start moving and reaching. Put things just outside the reach to get them to do it. Things that, that we used to do with kids a long time ago, like the airplane games whenever you're feeding them, uh, parents don't, don't do that anymore. And so you just need to get the baby engaged visually because the parents have to Well, that's, it, it is intriguing. I had wondered how you did that. Tell us about the Infancy Program itself. The Infancy Program is we have um, um, several thousand doctors across the country who uh, have agreed to see any baby between 6 and 12 months of age without charge to parent or to insurance company. And they'll do a full assessment looking at all the things I talked about. High movements, binocular function, refraction, nearsightedness, farsightedness, visual acuity, balance, deficits. To make sure that they're all ready to go and all have the, the, the underpinnings to start life. And um, they uh, report those back to us um, not with names or anything, but they report the data back to us. And the data has consistently shown us that 10% of the babies have followed up for some time. And that's much more than, because we're looking at a broader perspective, much more than just a basic screening for amblyopia, lazy eye, an eye turn. Well, I thank you ever so much for sharing this with us. I hope that it will give some young parents or grandparents or caregivers in daycare a better idea of what to watch for and how. And we thank you ever so much, Dr. Glenn Steele. Thank you. And, 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 you know, the thing is, just look. And that's what I call my test. Just look. Look at what they do. Look at how they do.